member supported Hawaii Public Radio and all things considered. I'm Dave Lawrence and a reunion of sorts is happening right now over at the Blue Note where uh, this group of gentlemen are going to be playing until Sunday night. It's Earl Clue and his band. Al Turner, bass and also band musical director. David Lee Spratley, keyboards. Ron Otis on the drums. Tom Braxton, the sax and the flute. Earl Clue himself. Real pleasure to have you guys back. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Brother Earl, great to see you in lovely purple. My general manager would like that one. (laughs) Oh, yeah, this is great. I got to think, the Earl Clue's Weekend of Jazz is coming up. It's George Benson, David Sanborn, just some of the guests this year. Is that something that you get excited about or you get nervous about? Oh, no, I'm never nervous. No. (laughs) You know, unless something happened. (laughs) But... We've been together for such a long time now. We have a really great band. The whole band is going to end up being there, too, backing you up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wonderful group of guys. Mr. Atomic Dog? Just, uh, <laughs> no, just, I just want to say, too. <laughs> Mr. Atomic Dog. <laughs> well, since you said that, I got to go, Roof. But I just want to add that these guys, Earl knows them personally as well. They're coming to the weekend of jazz because he's there. Like a big reunion. I mean, there are people that don't miss this thing, that have been there every year. Everybody gets together. Everybody knows everybody. I'm talking about the fans. But then it's also great for the musicians to see everybody as well. So it's a real happening. Some people even do the Colorado one and the one on uh, Kiowa Island. Speaking, Mr. Braxton, you got the new collaborative side project. I was taking a look at some of the stuff that you've got going on, the other side. Yeah, it's funny because I actually met Robert Sine, who's the trumpet player, that we did this project together at one of Earl's gigs. He, he's a big yeah. fan of Earl, and we played in Columbus, Ohio. And he said, let's do this project together. It took us two years of sending tracks, and it was really fun to do something with another horn player. You know, I was looking at your bio. September, they were here. So about six months ago, EWF was in town, Earth, Wind & Fire, and I didn't know where it plugged in. I was hoping you could explain Philip Bailey and how you got to work with the voice as they call him <laughs> that was interesting it was something that myself and kirk whalem and philip bailey did in houston big benefit we did some of my music did some of kirk whalem's music and philip bailey and i kept pinching myself i've been an earth wind and fire fan for centuries he was amazing really was just to stand next to him and hear that tone and hear all that he can do so it was a great experience absolute canon when he steps up to the play <laughs> al when you're running herd over al's a musical director and explain a little bit of what goes into being the md big musical director you kind of just make sure that everybody's on the same page these musicians really don't need much direction because we've been playing together a long time and the music is a great joy to play but usually any cues or when we start the song making sure everybody starts the same thing if there's an audible if we change a song in the middle of the show or something we make sure everybody's on page i'm a huge james brown fan when i've watched the classic videos of james somebody would make something wrong and james during the course of the song would turn around and be like you're fine 25 dollars 25 dollars fred wesley told me this he used to play with the horny horns and so did bootsy he played bass with James. They always were so afraid that James was going to look at them. Because if he looked at you, it's going to cost you money. <laughs> <laughs> and a few of you cats have had the experience of, of working with her, but I see Aretha's name mentioned. My experience with Aretha was in the recording studio. I never performed with her live for a reason, but I've, <laughs> I've played on several Aretha Franklin records. One of her sons was my best friend in elementary school. So I've known her for many years, and when I had the opportunity to record with her, it was very special. But she's the queen of soul for a reason. Ron has played on her records, and he's performed with her live, so he can tell you a little bit about Aretha in a live situation. How'd you get the gig? To be honest with you, I think I got that gig through doing some session work with her, with Al. I had this one funny story. Gloria Estevan, uh, husband, we on the in the middle of the show. Her husband comes up on the drums and is like whacking on the cymbals. So Aretha's playing piano and she's looking at me. I said, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> See, she's looking at me and when he gets off, he falls off the drum riser. <laughs> 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 but she is a true diva so stay in your lane out this year yeah yeah it's my uh, second record and uh i'm proud of it 
Al is on it. I couldn't get Earl this time, but hopefully the next one. Ron has a very funky sound. And when you think about David, gotten to work with, we were talking about JB, the parallel, the other half of that nut, if you will, would be George. There's just no question about that. You got to not only work with him, but you helped to develop one of his signature songs. We were joking about Atomic Dog earlier. Talk about first getting together with George, how you got the gig, and also developing that, what has become the kind of song that will last forever. It's timeless. It was all luck. I got a call from Greg Riley at the Super Disc Studio in East Detroit. He's an engineer, uh, part owner of the studio. I was doing piano sessions, uh, mostly like country and western stuff like that, right? And he calls me, says, hey, Dave, I got a session for you. If you can get over here tonight, because the guy that's supposed to do it didn't miss his flight or something. So I said, sure, whatever. How much did it pay? Oh, it'll pay good. So I went. I couldn't believe when the, I met the producer. His name was Donnie Sterling. And he's wearing Funkadelic gear, okay? I mean, he has the full dreadlocks. He's got stuff. Star Spangled shirts on, blousy pants, slippers with toes curled up. And he says, hey, I'm Donnie, I'm the producer, and we need some keyboards on this track. And I said, well, can I hear it? So I walked out to the piano, and the music came on, and I had never, ever really played any funk before. I heard the music, and it just hit a nerve in me. So I played a piano part. I said, this is kind of like what you want. He said, don't stop, don't stop, just do it, right? So after a few more overdubs and stuff, he pays me in cash and he says, thanks a lot, we're going to call you back. So and you still don't know who it's for yet? I don't know who it's for. So the next day I get this phone call and it's George. <laughs> and I couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> he said, I said, who's this? It's Joe Clinton. I said, who? George Clinton. I said, oh, no, I think you might have the wrong number. <laughs> and he says, no, he says, you played on my song last night. I want to meet you. So he gives me an address. It's in Southfield. And I go knock on his door. And he opens the apartment door. And the apartment is empty, completely empty. It's just carpeting. And he's wearing a sheet. And he no a surprise to George fans. <laughs> that or a diaper, it would all fit into the... <laughs> he, has, he has nothing else on. He's just got a sheet with a hole in the middle. And he draped it over his... That was his clothing. And he says, man, I love what you did. I want you to do... And, and you know, we hung out for about an hour and a half or so talking about the music and what we, he was going to try to do. He said, he's, I got this big record deal coming. I got to produce seven albums. I need tracks. I need people to play on the stuff we want you to do it so i said hey i'm your man next thing i know i was in the studio like every day just cutting tracks with all of his different groups you know he had parlet he had brides of funkenstein he had sweat band bootsy funkadelic and parliament so i was busy and that was the beginning of the song and the rest of the song just came out of me Gary Scheider, the other guy, co-writer. Gary Scheider, man. Cosmic Slop, the guy looking down on us. And did you get to know Bernie during those years? On the live show, I got to play with him. And that's where I learned a lot of my funk stuff, watching him. He's a genius, a prodigy. May, may he rest in peace. Yeah, no doubt. I got to spend like an hour sitting there interviewing him one time in New Jersey. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Bernie Worrell is, uh, and Gary, they're both uh, real heavy guys. Earl, as we go to wrap it up, you got a wonderful group of guys. I love hanging with you guys. Really special uh, vibe. One final question. Your latest album, Handpick. Local artist is on there. Is also a good friend of mine, Jake Shimabukuro. You guys are covering this classic from the Eagles, Hotel California, and share some memories of getting to work with Jake, who's our hometown hero. Jake is one of my best friends. He's a great guy, and we did a, a little thing in the studio, and, and I really enjoyed what he was doing because everybody has a different way of, of playing and I was just fascinated by the way that he plays because it seemed like it wouldn't go that way so it was frustrating so we sat there for another hour and then then I then he finally started telling me about some things that I could do if we put it together you know we did a couple things pretty nice so I, I love that he's a special guy diverse guy he can fit into just about any I mean he can shred on stage with, with a metal band or guys from Megadeth that he's hanging with really well it was a pleasure to talk with you guys I love it that you're back in town I hope that you make this a regular part of your life we would like that a lot <laughs> it's great to come here it really is yeah. it's uh, the Earl Clue and the band through Sunday at the Blue Note in Waikiki and a great pleasure to have time with all you guys again thank you so much for, for taking a little bit of time with me our pleasure definitely God bless you thanks for having us <laughs> yes sir thank you thank you Dave it's always a pleasure to see you thank you so much this was really a lot of fun